shalom and happy passover now the fact that i'm saying to you now happy passover may be confusing because much of the christian world has already discussed the crucifixion and they've already celebrated the resurrection and we know something when we look at the bible which has to be the foundation for our faith we know that messiah for example in first corinthians chapter 15 the apostle paul uses a greek term which corresponds to the hebrew word reshit and reshit means usually it's translated the first fruits it it relates to resurrection day and therefore also in first corinthians but this time in chapter 5 paul speaks of messiah as our passover lamb and indeed when we study carefully the new covenant specifically the gospels we see that messiah was crucified on what the gospels call preparation day which is another term for passover so undeniably yeshua was crucified on passover which means that the resurrection had to happen after the crucifixion but yet i say to you happy passover because biblically passover has not yet been observed according to what we read in the bible according to the law of moses so why this disagreement why this confusion well let me share with you how christianity by and large not all of christianity the orthodox church for example follows a different accounting but but most of the evangelical world this is how they determine when to observe the resurrection this is what they do they wait for the spring equinox when spring comes they also wait for another event and that is the first full moon after the spring equinox so why is that important the first full moon because passover is on the 14th day of the first month and every month on the 14th day there's a full moon so christianity by and large not the orthodox but the vast majority of the christian world waits for springtime the spring equinox the wait for the first full moon and then the sunday after those two criteria have been met then they proclaim resurrection day now here's the problem when we look at the bible we are mandated to observe passover in the spring this is why christianity waits for the spring equinox but judaism follows it a little bit different based upon some implications of the word of god for example when we look at the biblical calendar we need to acknowledge it is both lunar for example months are determined by the lunar cycle and we also know for example islam they follow only a lunar calendar and what does that mean it means that their observance of a special month for them the month of ramadan it moves around the calendar meaning sometimes it's in the summer sometimes it's in the spring then it moves to the winter and then into the fall and then back to the summer it moves around why because if we look at the lunar cycle and we take 12 lunar cycles for 12 months in a year when we take 12 times that lunar cycle it doesn't equal 365 and a quarter days therefore it comes up short which means that their observances are going to be shorter than a full year and therefore it propels them backwards as i said maybe in the spring then in the winter and then in the fall and then in the summer judaism is based upon not simply a lunar cycle but also 
the solar cycle why if we followed only the lunar cycle then passover wouldn't stay in the spring and in order to have that correction what takes place is this every two or three years approximately there is a leap year now i made mention of 365 and a quarter days on the gregorian calendar we find that every four years because a quarter times four is one so every four years there's an additional day added we call that a leap year judaism has that same term it's called shana meulbert which means kind of a pregnant year and every two or three years approximately the year gives birth to an additional month now the 12th month on the biblical calendar is called adar and every leap year in judaism we add another month called adar bet or adar two and it's a full month and this year is one of those months or one of those years when we add an additional month and therefore it extends things an additional month and what happens we have this differences now what i want you to understand is this when we look at messiah the bible's very clear that he was crucified on passover and we know something we know that passover is the 14th day of the first month and many people want to know and ask the question well is catholicism right and is it good that christianity for the most part embraces a a catholic view known as good friday that he was crucified on a friday and why do they do that well they say that it must be because they were hurrying to put him into the tomb before the shabbat before this this high sabbath now this is where things get very clear when we study the word of god there is a difference between the seventh day shabbat what the world calls saturday and a high shabbat that john's gospel speaks of in john chapter 19 i believe verse 31 a high shabbat is a holiday shabbat so there are days that are treated as a sabbath day regardless of what day they fall upon and let me give you an example of that one which is relevant for our discussion is the first day of unleavened bread when you study what the bible says about the feast of unleavened bread chag hamatzot we are told the first day of unleavened bread and the last day regardless of what day they fall upon they are to be treated as shabbats high shabbat which means you don't do any work shabbat law is in force on these special days now when we read the scripture carefully and here again don't take me for for knowing the truth study for yourself investigate always listen but validate see if what's being said is really true and i would invite you for example to look at luke's gospel chapter 23 and two verses the last two verses verses 55 and 56 what does it say there well we know that that joseph of arimathea was there he's the one that went and asked for the body of yeshua in order to bury him in his tomb and the women who came from galilee look at verse 55 they were there and they saw the spot where he was laid and then it says something it says that they went look at verse 56 they went and they bought spices and ointments they prepared them they bought the ingredients the spices in order to make the anointment the anointing material for his body to give him a proper burial but what happens well something happened 
they ran out of time they could not go and purchase and prepare and get to the tomb before the sabbath day and this would be the normal seventh day sabbath so they bought the spices and prepared them before shabbat but then when you look for example at at mark's gospel chapter 16 and verse 1 it tells us that very same thing but they did it after the sabbath now what does that mean after the sabbath after the high sabbath so this is what we know yeshua was crucified on the 14th day of the first month that year it had to be on a wednesday so this good friday myth is just that it is a false legend it is not supported in the scripture why well we know something if we look at this and we find that the women after shabbat meaning after the first day of unleavened bread now if he was crucified on a wednesday and i'll prove that in a moment then the first day of unleavened bread had to be a thursday and it was only after according to mark 16 and verse 1 it was only after that sabbath the first day of unleavened bread the 15th day of nisan that the women went and bought and prepared but what happened before they could get to the tomb to anoint his body as they planned to do what happened shabbat came what shabbat the normal seventh day shabbat and therefore that means that the women had to buy and prepare the spices to make that ointment to anoint his body on a friday so if they bought the spices after the high shabbat the 15th day of nisan that 15th day had to be a thursday they bought the spices on the 16th day and the 17th was that typical seventh day shabbat a saturday so he wasn't crucified on a good friday this is false it is not supported in the scripture we find that he was crucified on the 14th day of the first month which was on a wednesday that year everyone observed the high shabbat the first day of unleavened bread no work could be done and therefore the women after that high shabbat according to mark chapter 16 verse 1 they went and prepared the spices having purchased them and then according to luke chapter 23 and verse 56 they weren't able to get to the tomb to anoint his body so they rested on the seventh day shabbat and then what happens well they went to the tomb on the first day of the week and what did they find they found an empty tomb what does that mean he had already risen and what we know is this yeshua was in that tomb as he testified to he talked about the sign of jonah which is the resurrection jonah for example he was in that belly of the fish for three days and three nights and the scripture says in jonah that he descended into sheol which means jonah died and what happened he was resurrected that's why messiah says no sign will be given to you except for the sign of jonah jonah resurrected and it was then after resurrecting from that belly of the fish that great fish that he went and served god we have a resurrection experience through messiah and we're called to do that same thing and serve god so what we find biblically is that the apostle paul i want to go back to first corinthians 15 he calls yeshua twice by that hebrew term he uses the greek word that that means the same thing but he calls yeshua reshit why that tells us that he rose from the dead on the beginning of the counting of the omer which brings me to the next thing
I'd like to talk about, and that is the differences between what Judaism teaches and what the Bible says concerning this counting of the Omer. Judaism today always begins the counting of the Omer on the 16th day of that first month. That is incorrect. Why? If you look at Leviticus chapter 23, when it speaks about this observance, we know something. We begin the counting of the Omer, and certain things have to happen. First of all, the first day of unleavened bread had to take place. Then after that, we wait for the first Shabbat after the 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 observance of the first day of unleavened bread and the next day which has to be a sunday because if we say we wait for the first day of unleavened bread the 15th day of that first month and the first shabbat after that 15th day is that sabbath which the scripture speaks of and that it's the day after the sabbath which has to be the first day of the week that the counting of the omer begins that's why no date is given judaism is incorrect when it assigns a date to the beginning of the counting of the omer the rashid is never given a date why because you have to follow a formula the formula is very simple as i said you wait for the first day of unleavened bread and the first shabbat after the first day of unleavened bread and the day after and that's exactly the term micharat hashabbat the day after that sabbath is when you begin the count that tells us undeniably that messiah this this resurrection occurred because he is called by paul the rishit the first fruit it happened on the first day of the week now let's be very careful because when does the first day of the week begin well after sundown on saturday meaning this when shabbat is over that seventh day comes to an end with sundown then it's the first day of the week and messiah rose on the first day of the week i happen to believe shortly after the conclusion of shabbat it's still the first day of the week on saturday when it's dark it's no longer saturday under the biblical reckoning it's the first day of the week and yeshua rose on the first day of the week and when the women came to the tomb early sunday morning they found that he had already risen the tomb was empty and then later on we see that that mary magdalene after experiencing the empty tomb she met yeshua later so we need to be very clear about things so we're talking about the timing for passover the timing of resurrection day the proper time to begin the counting of the omer and there's two ways we count the omer we begin on that first day of the week after the first day of unleavened bread and we begin that count and we count 49 days and the next day is the feast of weeks shavuot or pentecost or we find that we count not just 49 days and the next day but every seven days we count a week so it's seven weeks that's why it's called chag ha shavuot in judaism the feast of weeks because we count seven full weeks and then the next day is shavuot or pentecost pentecost relating to the greek term for 50. so seven full weeks is 49 days and the next day is is pentecost this observance this appointed day from the lord so i hope what i've just shared helps clarify things and realize this year because it is indeed a leap year that extra month that second adar is observed 
that is why we have such a difference between when traditionally most of christianity observes the resurrection and when they talk about the crucifixion which occurred on passover and remember passover is just one day the 14th day of that first month but the feast of unleavened bread is seven days passover is preparation for the feast of unleavened bread and that's why it's called repeatedly in all four gospels that messiah was crucified on preparation day that tells us passover so god's word is clear we can know the the dating we can know the days of the week and we can know what happened during this significant time of passover and the feast of unleavened bread because god wants us to know the truth in order that we can live out the truth while well, close with that again happy passover and let us rightly celebrate the resurrection according to the truth of scripture i'll close with that shalom mm-hmm.